This is my patient, Dr. Shreen. This is part two of her case study. Flexor withdrawal reflex sends a monosynaptic reflex arc into the spinal cord back to the quad. So when I do this, it should cause strength here. Push up. But if I do a cross cord reflex, it should cause weakness here. Here I'm going over the basics of the flexor withdrawal reflex testing. Push up. I want to recheck the doc's TMJ. Okay. So right now she's testing well. We do some trigger point work on the muscles of mastication, just to make certain she's not having any underlying issues. This is the Push. test asymmetrical tonic neck reflexes. Head in the direction and the push out. Good. And they're normal. Doc, go walk. Let me see how you feel. I went and had the doc go walk so I could recheck everything. These are primitive reflexes. Push up. Push up for me. I want to double check that because it didn't test well. Like that. That's normal. So I'm going to go look at her right hand. And it should be facilitated, and it is. So her balance is, is not great. Mm -hmm. It's better than when we started, but it's not phenomenal. Let's check one last thing. So here I want to check some of her low backs. This is gallant reflex, and it should inhibit that hamstring, which it did. It should facilitate this one, in which it did. Should be inhibited. Don't it is. Good. And the cross cord reflex should facilitate. Don't let me pull. Good. I'm going to double check this one. Yeah, it's not okay. testing properly. I'm going to triple check it. It's still abnormal. I'm going to mobilize her hip to see if we were to adjust that, would it correct the reflex? And it does. Really light on the okay. So if I have time, I let patients rest. It didn't really significantly impact her, her balance. I want to stimulate if she was walking, what would that look like? That's what the tapping on the foot looks like. And it inhibits both of her legs. I was a little thrown off because we had already done a lot of her, treated a lot, a lot of other issues within her. So long story, I went and determined that she had a bilateral strain on her calf muscles. So we're going to do some trigger point therapy on those calves and see what impact it has. Push up, Doc. There we go. Go walk. <laughs> Doc, we're gonna do a different move. Give me your hand. This is an upper body ergometer exercise, and you know it because it looks like this. You give me a tab bit more weight. So it's an attempt to stimulate proprioceptive inputs through um, the cuneatus, nucleus cuneatus, into the cerebellum, into the brain. Right. Now try your and to see if it changes her balance. Keep coming, keep coming, keep and coming. And no. So sometimes cases like this that are complicated don't go exactly as planned. I want to recheck the doc's low back to see if I missed something. Okay. Don't let me pull. Push up. So we're going to do a little lower than TL junction, L1, L1, L2 area. And I would not say that's improved at all. Sometimes you need to let it go until the next session. 
and that's this day. I asked the doc to adjust me earlier. One of the interesting things about chiropractic that a lot of people may not be aware of is table height. The doctor's table is much lower than my table, and therefore she has a harder time getting leverage on this table because it doesn't go low enough for her to use her body weight. This is her pressing and feeling for restrictions and the lack of motion in my spine. See, she knows she can't get the leverage here, so I have to commend her. <laughs> Good job, Doc. Good job. Here she can get the leverage she needs. Once again, this table is too high for her. It was right there, though. I told her to go one more time. Doc, do one more. You almost had it. Too high. it. And this time, she got it. There you go. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. 